So this chestnut leaf oh, also has a pretty leaf to it. Look at that. That's really nice. I am nursing these chestnut leaf oaks in this garden bed. And I'm also growing garden produce in it. And let's go through them, show you what's all in here. I have some potatoes. These potatoes I actually didn't plant. They are remnants of from a couple years ago. I must have let one plant go last year. I can't even recall. And I'm also nursing ginkgos. And the ginkgos doesn't look like they made the trip. I think they're all dead. So, uh, the ancient tree is no more in my land. But anyways, there's potatoes and I got peas. This little section here. This would be on the north edge of the bed. And in the center we have garlic. Not too many. Maybe like eight, ten of them. And then on the front side, these are French shallots. So not only are we nursing some beautiful little oak seedlings, but we're also growing a crop to eat. These are volunteer radishes that have been growing here for quite a few years already. They go to seed pretty fast, but some of them bulb up. But these, this batch doesn't look like it's bulbing up. Yeah, I don't know. So if that's the case, I'm not going to let them go to seed anymore. They're uh, ground cherries that I planted the seeds of last year. Now my my ground cherries that I got the seeds from, they got some sort of a disease. Not all of them. Let's walk over here. I'll show you. Here you see the leaves are dying on them. I'm not sure what's going on. They're springing back. That's where all the blossoms were, and all the blossoms are dead too. This one's got kind of the same problem. So they might not be a, a crop that I even want. I guess I'll try those seeds out. Let them grow for a couple of years. Give it time. Sometimes these trees figure out what to do for themselves. They figure it out and they fix the problem. This is an interesting bed here. I have uh, captivator gooseberries that I mound layered and then I dug them up and broke them all apart. And then I got those ground cherries or uh, bush cherries. And as an intercrop, we have Six Nations beans growing in here and some garlic. And in the front of this, I have more French shallots. Front is uh, is the um, sun side. Look, I got some, another potato plant that's volunteering in here. You see the beans are all over the place. Right now they're growing in the shade, but I expect they're gonna lift themselves up into the sun pretty soon. This is main crop garden number one. This is where it started. So I might as well go through this bed right away too. Here I'm nursing nanny berries. That's an nanny berry seedling right there. And there's a peach tree I'm nursing. Got a couple garlics in here. This is a bed of potatoes and peas. It just so happens that as soon as the potatoes are made and they're sitting there underground, that's when the voles are at peak population. And voles are a little harder to trap. So now I'm hard work clothing all this stuff. And last year I experimented with it and didn't have any problems. You know, peas and potatoes are, are known to be companion plants. Giving it a try. I got quite a few of these experiments going on around the property. And here I'm nursing more seedlings. Those are peaches, and there's some plums in here, and uh, uh, hazelnuts. This is going to need a little work here. I see some weeds coming up. 
I'm still in the building stage yet for the year. I've got a climbing bean there growing for trellising up this pear tree. And I also got a tomato plant I'm going to trellis up. And I had planted peach pits in here. And not very many came up. And this one's got a problem. Something happened to it. We have one here. This is from pits on my yard from that from that really good tree. There's actually put two pits in every single one of these pots. This is the only one where two came up. And then two others came up and one isn't growing very well. <laughs> so I don't know. Sometimes it takes two years for one of those things to sprout, I think. I don't know. Oh, here's another one. The one I, I missed. Yeah. No, I don't know. No, I don't think so. That might be a weed. I don't know. Uh, we'll let it there for a little bit, see what happens. I got two pits in every one of those and not a single one come up. So they went through the winter like that. It might be that that's just too cold for them. Sitting in those pots. And it just could be that these are really special peaches because they were able to make it. <laughs> so that back bed has got lots of garlic in it more of those bush cherries and uh, a couple of special trees I actually got one fruit out of it last year and this year I'm not going to get any but last year was transplanted in the spring so medlars two medlars back here I really want those to grow hope they make it Here's the other one right here. It's got good growth on it. And there's kiwis. These are red beauty kiwis. That's kind of a nice picture there actually. And those are kiwis. <laughs> That's like 20 feet high. Look at that. That's a male kiwi right there with the white leaves. You can see all the blossoms in there. Just look at them all. This is a Irwin Bauer apple tree. It's tucked away in this little shady corner. I don't know how much of a crop it's going to become, but there's a Swiss chard. That's a ground cherry, and then these are celeriacs. There's a garlic and a black berry coming up together in the center of it. And these are black currants and josta berries and gooseberries. And here we have another kiwi. This is a ship nova. I got some, got a weedy mess here to to clean up. I planted peas in here and the peas never sprouted. So uh, I haven't tended to this garden yet for a while. I'm, I'm nursing a, a specialized hybrid willow that grows really fast and there's very lots and lots of shoots on it. That's for up north. This is a Ivan's Beauty and it's fr fruited for the first time. We'll see if any of them. Uh, I think they're going to make it. Some of them are. Get a couple of them to eat them. Here's a big old black currant here in this corner that's just gone nuts. And I'm going to, I plan to dig it out after it fruits, transplant it. So, these are just experiments to see how it all works with the garden. And now I'm wanting more garden, less perennials. More annuals, less perennials here in the main crop gardens. But I might change my mind and decide, well, we'll just cut it back. We'll just prune it up. Yeah, I think about it. And then I let thistles grow. So I had a visitor yesterday and he says, I'm going to buy that lot next door and plant thistles and crabgrass so, so it bothers your gardens. <laughs> Got news for them. I got thistles and crabgrass already. Well, the crabgrass not so much anymore. That's that just doesn't like living here anymore. But the thistles I want to grow. 
that's food for the goldfinch, and the goldfinch eats aphids and and all these other pests that I got around here. I don't have a lot of pests because I got a lot of birds. And that's about thinking about the whole summer when, what can they eat all summer long? And one of those times is when the thistles are going to seed and they eat thistle seed. So I probably got at least a dozen of these growing around the property. I let them grow.